take a couple of plants at a time. Need to keep them. Normally we'll handle them by the cubes, but we want that cube to stand up in the channel. This one's wanting to lie down on me. Tuck it under the edge there a little bit. Move this in. One plant per hole. Slide it in, lift it up a little bit to get it over the support stringer. Being careful at this stage is important. We don't want to injure the plants. So taking a little bit of extra time to get these plants into their final home comfortably in the position that we want them is well worth it. Now that we've got the channel full, we'll slide it down into place. Again, lifting so the end goes over the end support. And we can just line that up so that the elbow will slide right into the drain line. Move this over, retrieve the feed line into the channel. During the process of transplanting, some of the leaves may be bottom side up. That will only remain for a day or so. Within a day, all the leaves will turn over and be right side up. Throughout the greenhouse, we're going to have plants at different stages of growth. The plants in these channels, of course, we just transplanted. Over here, the plants in these channels have been in here for about a week. Up here, these plants have been in the channels for about two weeks. These ones, three weeks. These plants have been here about four weeks and they're ready to be harvested. We're going to harvest this lettuce. What we pack this in depends upon our market and how we pack it depends upon the market also. We'll want to have our materials ready before we start harvesting. We also want to choose harvest times. We'll want to harvest early in the morning when it's still cool or later in the evening when it is cooling off. We normally don't want to be harvesting in the middle of the day because the heat will be built up in this lettuce. And that can lead to wilting. So we can get better quality lettuce if we harvest when the lettuce itself is a little cooler. If we're going to be harvesting this and putting it in a crisper, we want to have things set up before we start pulling the lettuce. So we'll want to label some crispers. The labels, we will want to have them in the middle of the label area. And we will want to have them facing all the same way. 
so that when these are setting in the display case or in your uh, shipping box, you open them up and the labels are all facing the same way. So we'll put those labels on and get a number of crispers ready for the harvesting process. We'll also want to get the packing boxes ready and made up. So we'll get the box, open it up, and make it up. Put tape across here. Taping is important to keep the box together. Okay, it's time to harvest a head of lettuce. I'll get a crisper ready here. I slide my hand in under the lettuce and pull up, pulling the roots and all out of the channel. I remove any excess roots. We'll leave some roots on here, but we don't need that many roots on here. I'll turn the head over, clean up any of the wilted yellow or dead leaves on the bottom. I will put the top of the lettuce in the crisper. I'll tuck the leaves down in. I will close the crisper, putting the roots down into the well on the bottom. I'll flip it over and I'll push on either side of the fastener button. This is ready to go into the master carton. If we've got two people for the harvesting operation, it runs much more smoothly. The person lifting the lettuce and trimming the lettuce will get some algae and some moisture on his hands. So if we have another person around the corner handling the packaging material and handling the lettuce once it is trimmed and ready to go in, his hands or her hands are going to be remaining cleaner and it will make the operation go much more smoothly. Some growers will harvest and pack in plastic bags and put those in a master box. Before we do that, we need to set up. We'll need to set out the plastic bags. We'll also need to make up the cartons. These cartons are numbered. There's a number one over here. So that's the first side that'll get folded down. And then we've got a two and a three. And this is number four. This gets folded down, pushed all the way down so that it snaps in and makes a bottom that will hold the lettuce. So we make a number of these up and set them aside where we can put the lettuce. I slide my fingers under the lettuce, pull it up, remove excess roots on the bottom, remove any yellow or dead leaves on the bottom, get the plastic bag, open it up, drop the lettuce in, roots to the bottom of the bag. Set the bag in the master box, top up. Bulk lettuce is harvested 
and packed into the packing boxes in a plastic liner. The plastic liner is pulled off the roll and put into the box. After the box is made up, we put the plastic liner in the box and have one edge of it sticking up on the side. So we'll put this down in the box This edge will come up just to the top. This will be like this. And we'll put the lettuce into an envelope in the box. Bib lettuce is ready to harvest when the outside leaves are going vertical and when the inside leaves have grown almost up to the level of the outside leaves, filling in the inside of that head. We cannot look down inside this head and see the growing point. The leaves have obliterated that, covered it up. This head of bib lettuce is ready to harvest. As growers get into growing lettuce, they're often asked, what else can you grow? Or as they see that the market is looking for convenience, now the bag salad is convenient, but some people like to have something that's fresher. This looks fresher. This is fresher. So this can be harvested, pulling it out of the channel, trim the excess roots off, trim any yellow leaves off. This is actually each plant in here, and there's 10 or 12 plants in here. Each plant is younger. But we've got an assortment of lettuce here that uh, can make a nice package. We can put that into a plastic bag or we can bulk pack it for the restaurant trade. Marking the box before you harvest the lettuce is a good time to get your record keeping done. We need to mark on here the count in the box. And we put a, a lot code on there. And a date of when we harvested that. And often growers will code that so that they know when the uh, harvest was made. And whether it is a bulk pack or whether it is bagged. So we're going to uh, bag this lettuce. There are a couple of ways to harvest basil. A lot, again, depends upon the market, to whom the grower is marketing, whether it's individual packages that are sold in a grocery store, or whether it's a bulk pack in the restaurant. Some growers will take this whole plant assembly. Actually, there's probably three or four plants here. They'll pull it out of the channel, trim a few roots off, maybe remove some roots or some uh, yellow leaves at the bottom. Don't seem to be any here. We've got quite a bundle of basil here. This can be set into a plastic bag upright like this. Put a little solution in there to keep it for a period of time. A number of these will keep fresh in cooler, not refrigeration, in cooler, nothing below 55 degrees to keep this basil from turning dark. Other growers will harvest basil by clipping it and letting it regrow. When basil is cut, we want to remove no more than half the foliage on the plant. That way it will regrow rather quickly. So if I take from here up, we'll get half, maybe a little less than half the foliage, but we'll get a, a good bunch of basil. So right above these leaves, 
There's a little sucker growing out here, uh, one on the other side. I'll just snip that off here. And I've got several nice leaves of basil. Over on the other part of the plant, I'll snip this right here. We may be able to cut this much basil from that plant next week. It's important to get lettuce into the cooler within 20 minutes of the time it has been harvested. So after finishing harvesting two or three boxes, pick them up, carry them to the cooler. In the lettuce cooler, the temperatures will be 34 to 38 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature at which lettuce will store the longest. We'll want to keep that temperature fairly constant. When we move that lettuce out of the cooler into transit, we'll want to keep it as cool as possible. Not everybody has a, an air-conditioned or refrigerated van, but many people will use their personal van turn the air conditioner on ahead of time and as long as the journey isn't too long and as long as the temperatures outside aren't too hot they'll make that journey and keep that lettuce very cool and acceptably cool on its way to the market. In the summertime deliveries are often made early in the morning before the real heat of the day comes along. And that way you can get away with not having as sophisticated a delivery vehicle as you might have later on once the business grows. The lettuce fertilizer concentrates are mixed according to a recipe. That recipe is derived after looking at the lab analysis report for the water on location things will be increased or decreased based on what is already in the water. The concentrates are located in the concentrate tanks. Here we have the calcium nitrate, some of the potassium nitrate, and the chelated iron. In the second concentrate tank we have the rest of the fertilizers made up of magnesium sulfate, potassium sulfate, some potassium nitrate, the micromix made up of copper, zinc, boron, manganese, and molybdenum. These are injected into the system through the Fertroller. We'll get to that in a moment. The third tank is water and acid and it will be injected separately according to the need. Okay, let's look at the Fertroller. The Fertroller monitors and controls the injection of the fertilizer and acid. There's a EC monitor controller there's a sensor down here that senses the level of fertilizer in the solution that is being pumped to the plants from the reservoir. When the EC drops, it causes 